thieves will be able to escape the evil Minotaur's maze. They should have known those wings would never work. They're too flimsy. <clears throat>
right, we're gonna fly down that sledding hill. We'll beat everybody. No worries, son. I'm sure I can ride on Sam the Rooster to wake me when the sun comes up. Now, for more important matters. What is it, Pop? How does it work? What's it called? <laughs> Why not? 
For Van, the sun, she is in the wrong place. For two, it will be all shadows and glare. Again, I say no, I am not ready. Zut alor. Question. Mama, is he really trying? Yeah, yeah, Hans, I think so. See over there? He's picking up the glider. He is walking to the edge of the cliff. Oh, I got bad look. Mama! We can't only be up here and you're not going to look? Uh oh, I hope he'll be all right. Uh oh. Oh, he's doing it. He's making the jump. He's going oh, no. down. He's crashing. He's stumbling into, into the ground. Turn away! Don't look, my kingdom. What is it, Will? Your suspense is. Killing me, brother. Jigs Donahue struck out. Oh. Well, I've just got to get out of this bed. I've been resting for weeks. I'm feeling a little better, Captain. How's we were supposed to run the bicycle shop without me? Would you stop trying to talk with the thermometer in your mouth? I'm sure I'll manage, Orf. The important thing is that you get some rest so you can feel better. Been resting for weeks. Perhaps I could just lick this type, but if I could just get up, get some fresh air. Perhaps I'll take a spin on my bike. Just where do you think you're going? See, your fever is making you talk gibberish. We lost a lot of the consumption, and I'll be darned if I let typhoid take you. Or the doc said you're fortunate to be alive at all. Don't push your luck. Here, get the sports if you're so antsy to do something. Oh, all right. Give it back if you aren't going to read it, then. This isn't the sports section at all, Kathy. Wilbur, how did you miss this article in the World News? It's about, his gr it's about our great greatest aviator. You mean Otto Lundbaum? What about him? Does this really say what I think it does? It's just my fever. I didn't want you to hear such bad news when you're trying to get better, Worf. This tiny newsprint is blurring. Darn this fever. Read to me, Wilbur. I want to know. Sacrifices must be made. These were the last words of renowned German aviator Otto Lilienthal. They were spoken to him through his, to his brother Gustav in a Berlin clinic. Lilienthal died of injuries sustained when his glider stalled and fell to earth on a test flight on August 9th in the renowned Hills area of Germany. The day was fair and sunny. After three successful flights, one in which he glided 250 meters, witnesses say his glider stalled. Lilithal made an attempt to correct the altitude of his glider but failed. He plummeted 15 meters to the ground and was removed from the wreckage by his mechanic and taken by horse-drawn carriage to Stalin. A physician there examined his fractured spine and had him transported by train to one of Germany's best surgeons in Berlin. But Lilithal died there a few hours later, about 36 hours after the crash. Now he's going to show the world how to fly.
how far away. Now to solve the problem of where to fly. I find my eye on Mr. Huffman's prairie just north of town. It's the windiest and flattest place in all of Dayton. But aren't there trees and even some telegraph poles in that pasture? Yeah, not to mention cows. What about the place where Octave Chanute flew? In Indiana, with uh, the sand dunes. Let's see what it says in his letter. <laughs> it says in Indiana there were news reporters and photographers behind every single sand dune. Well, so what? I don't mind letting a few local reporters know what we're up to. Wilbur, no! We never get any serious work done. Reporters aren't interested in aeronautical science. They just want a good show. Like we're nothing but circus performers. What's this letter here? Hey, when did this arrive? I've been waiting for it. Who's it from? The National Weather Bureau. I told them the type of flight conditions we needed for proper gliding. Steady winds of at least 15 miles per hour and preferably somewhere with sand or water to cushion the impact of a potential crash. Whoa, they took you seriously. They made, a they made a list of places. Ooh, San Diego. We fancied a vacation in San Diego. And Florida. Couldn't I tag along on the trip, Pa? Over my dead body. Knowing you, you'd probably talk them into giving you glider rides. Rides? I'd rather talk them into flying lessons. Catherine, don't frighten your poor old father. I suppose I'll say that, Pa. Someone's got mine in this shop, I guess. What about a place here? Sixth on the list. Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. They call it uh, the Little Hammond, just off the coast. Well, let's see what our friend Octave Chanute has to say about Kitty Hawk. I like the name Kitty Hawk. It has a nice ring to it. Because hawks can fly, and kitties always land on their feet unharmed when they fall. <laughs> Georgia has some favorable flying conditions, and so do the Carolinas. Long sandy beaches, he writes, miles and miles long. Ocean headwinds to help you come back to where you take off. Well, if you're looking to work discreetly, then you certainly couldn't get any more isolated. Then Kitty Hawk it shall be. Octave Chenu, what would we do without you? I know just what you would do without Octave Chenu. You would stay alive. Oh, Pa, we'll be careful. Well, to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Here we go. To, to Kitty, Kitty Hawk. Hawk. Be able to do more experiments. It just 
takes too much time and money that we don't have. You really need it to learn. You said that not within a thousand years, and men will fly. Well, maybe not. I do think men will fly sometime, just not in our lifetime. When greater minds than ours have tried and failed, who are we to think we can solve this problem? It's quite an ambitious leap from Dayton, Ohio bicycle mechanics to aeronautical engineers. Well, 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 you must stop. I will not let you talk this way. You've achieved a certain level of control. You found a way to reduce drag. And look at your smooth landing. The glider, you've locked down a smooth and incredible success. That's right. With your elevator, there's no more nose down. Not today, anyway. Nothing like witnessing some fatal daredevil stunt like Lily Enfield pulled to take away a man's appetite. It's baffling. When I warp the wings, the glider turns in the intended direction, but then it reverses on itself like it has a mind of its own. And the elevator has its own problems, too. It's far too sensitive and erratic. You've got more questions than answers. We top new problems on top of all those. But we're back when we started. Yeah. Then we go ahead and get some sleep. I assume the captain and Chuck Taylor can't run the bus shop forever while we're out here vacationing and playing with our flying toys. Play? It is not play. You're doing important work for the aeronautical community. No, for all of mankind. Well, for all the hard work, it sure was fun. Look at the records you broke. <laughs> Look at those bones he nearly broke. Just about split his head away on that last bill. I don't know which is more irritating. Or have I'm hitting the hay. I got an early start tomorrow, leaving the skeeter-infested hurricane of old behind me. Is anyone using this pillow? I can't say I'll be sorry to see that man go. Look, Mama, that mop. It's right <laughs> Society of Engineers would benefit from hearing about our findings at the convention. Well, I must say I agree with him. I just don't see how hearing about our miserable failures will help anybody. <laughs> well, Bert, I think it's time we join the aeronautical community. Knowing our results, good or bad, is important. How do you feel? If something you try results in failure, injury, or even death, as in poor Lilenthal's case, it's important for everyone to know. It can prevent others from duplicating costly experiments that have already been tried but have failed. I suppose you're right. They're all part of progress, of successes and failures. Exactly, brothers. But what will these men say when I tell them that me and Orville are questioning the calculations of en engineers like Smeaton and Lilenthal? <laughs> Their tables have been accepted as the gospel truth in the aeronautical community for years. To laugh us right off the stage. Or applaud you as a genius for discovering their mistakes. You have to go. This is bigger than both of you now. This could change the whole world. Gosh, well, when you put it like that, I suppose, I suppose that it's worth, uh, I suppose that it's worth letting getting ridiculed or laughed at. Let's go buy your train tickets before either of you can change your minds. And so in conclusion, gentlemen, because our main problem was achieving lift, 
Me and my brother regret to say, we believe Lilenthal's table of lift and drag may be incorrect. You are guilty! You have said that every right here! Yeah. 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 creating wind and measurable flight conditions in a laboratory. Yes. But how? Come with me, boys. I've got an idea for a little contraption you can build right in your bike shop. I'm so glad you boys could test various wing designs with this new wind tunnel of yours. Instead of up in the air, risking your lives. <laughs> it really works. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Look at it. Catherine's everything for us. Exactly. So Catherine! which accounted for the density of air. Oh, no. Can't you put it more simply than that? Well, I can. <laughs> now that we figured out the right calculations, we can go back to focusing on our original problem, of control. You see, Catherine, a glider in flight is free to rotate in all three dimensions. I'll make it easy as one, two, three. In order for us to have complete control of our glider, we need to have control of three different things. Roll, pitch, and yaw. Ideas they want to try out. 
What's that? For one, they built this movable rudder. Well, I'll be. And they asked their mechanic, Chuck Taylor, if he could build them an engine that's never even existed before. One that was light enough and powerful enough to spin those propellers and turn that machine up in the air. Propellers? Yep. See them? Sure do. They turn like the ones on a kid's pinwheel toy. And you know how in the past they used to call it the right glider? Yeah, that's right. Well, now they call it the right flyer on account of it being self-propelled. Golly. Chuck Taylor told them it weren't much of an engine, but if those right boys say it'll work, you have to believe them. And why exactly do I have to believe them? Because they never say nothing unless they're sure it's an absolute fact. They already tried out the glider on Monday. The 14th was it, but it accelerated and lifted too fast. That was a scary sight. It stalled in midair and came crashing into the ground. It swung around to the sand so hard one of the front skids broke. A few of the struts and braces were broken too. Yeah, but for some reason they got all excited. They whooped and hugged and said, the engine will work, the engine will work. Said all it needed to have to do was have a few repairs. Well, I wish they'd hurry. It's getting downright cold out here. I like to die when I saw them hang up that red blanket to signal us for help. I sure hope they appreciate our southern hospitality. Leaving back the cozy fire back at the lifeguard station and coming out here on the beach in freezing temperatures and 27 mile per hour winds. Yeah, to lift that 600 pound contraption across this frozen sand and onto its wooden launching rail. Hey, look, here they come now. Thanks for coming out in the cold, boys. It took us three days, but I think we're finally ready to fly again. You gonna flip the coin to see who's gonna ride that thing? No. Wilbur got to fly last time, so we decided it would be my turn. Come on, Will. Help me hold the propeller. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck, boys. Good luck. I sure hope that engine's powerful enough. Look, they're holding hands like folks parting, not sure they're gonna see each other again. They're starting down the track. Wilbur can't even keep up with steadying the wing, he's going so fast. I better get this camera ready. This photo could end up being a historic one. Uh, you better, all right. He's almost off the track. He's up. Look at him go. But does he have control? He did it. Orville's flying, and it has control. <laughs> it's working. The engine's working. Good job. It's only got 12 horsepower, but it's doing the trick! It sure is! Oh no. I forgot to keep track of the time of his landing. I got it, son. 12 seconds. 12 seconds? What's so big about that? Because for every one of those 12 seconds, he was in complete control of that flying machine. We just set the record for the first ever sustained Controlled, powered flight. And that was a smooth flight. As smooth as an eagle landing, swooping down to catch a fish. The Wright brothers have done it. They found a way to control flight. They did it. They did it. It works. It worked. I can't believe it. We did it, brother. How are you gonna go tell the folks at Kitty Hawk? They did it. They did it. I'll do that when you hear about this, Wilbur. Oh, Byron, tonight! Success at last! We'll be home for Christmas! <laughs> pa, they did it! They did it! And they'll be home for Christmas! Oh, we'll have to tell Lauren! And Octave Chanute! And have Lauren notify the press! They weren't! Oh, Pa! Can you believe it? I can't! It's amazing! You know what, brother? What's that, Will? There's no place to go from here but up.
I'm filming that. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! 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 Woo! Yeah! Woo! Good job! Abby! And then imagine...